that is actually such a crazy point. Just because you won't be petite doesn't mean you won't be healthy. You could still lose weight. You can still be beautiful. You could still have so much about you that's amazing. You don't have to be petite. You could be beautiful without being petite. I'm not the biggest, strongest man on the world, but I know I can be more handsome. I know I can build more muscle. I don't need to be Arnold or Ronnie. You can be who you are in a better version of yourself. Oh my God. Listen, it's one thing to be a plus size influencer, body positive influencer, and then decide you want to lose weight. It's a very different thing to see your followers who followed you because of this body positive messaging get upset and angry or confused about why suddenly you are saying the opposite of everything you've been saying for the past few years. If you didn't know you were wrong and then suddenly you do realize you were wrong because of some new information or whatever it may be, you shouldn't feel like you're entitled to continue preaching this message of terribleness to all the people, especially if it's going to only make their lives worse. I think that's probably the worst thing you can do. So if you are somebody, and I hate when people say this thing, like you should not be the same person from year to year to year to year. You should be different. You should be encouraged to grow and learn and find new information and adopt new mentalities and things such and so forth. If you are the same person you were when you were 18 to where you are now or like whatever, whatever age you are now, that's not a good thing. It's not a flex. I hate when people go, I'm never going to change. The change is nothing. I'll, I'm, I'm going to be the exact same person. That's not good. That's not a good thing. You should want to change. You should want to have the ability to learn new things. And when you learn those new things, that's a good thing. So when you see these plus size influencers who have been preaching all the beauty and the, ama the amazingness of being fat for so long and only to their detriment and everybody else's detriment around them, because I know and you know, if you're telling other people that your lifestyle is amazing and it's great to a certain degree, you are going to, and I, I hate, I hate when people say this, like, oh, you are not the people that watch you. That's right. You're true. People are their own, un they're their own autonomous human beings and they do whatever they want. But I think it's a very, very ignorant thing to say that when you say something and the people that watch you, watch you for what you say, it's ignorant to say that those people are not going to, to some degree, take what you say and adopt it in their own life. And I'll give you an example. Alex Jones, I know, it's crazy, right? Alex Jones would say something, okay? Something crazy, something uh, outrageously insane. And are you thinking that the people watching him, his avid fan base, are going to go, that's ridiculous. That is, what? Why would anybody on earth ever say that? I'm sure some of them would, but there's probably a good portion of them that are going to take it at face value and go, this is true. I'm going to believe this. Even though they can just Google it or fact check it or anything like that, and they're going to, they're just going to roll with it. They're just going to roll with it wherever. So to a certain degree... The words you say have a lot of value behind them, and depending on who you are as a person, it's going to implicate. It's going to have a lot more implications compared to somebody on the street who doesn't have anybody that follows them or anything like that. So it's, it's. I hate it when people go, "I'm just a guy that makes videos, and you know, like I don't really have a lot of influence." Fuck you. Yes, you do. You're lying. You know you do. Stop saying you don't. I, I'm sick of people sitting there going that they. Like, you should be preaching good messages as much as you can. Now, granted, everybody's going to be ignorant to a certain degree, so you shouldn't have to feel like you're responsible for like, you know, being wrong or things like that. In the sense of like, you're going to have to correct those things if you're wrong. But um, when it comes to these fat acceptance influencers, dude, if you had these terrible informations for so long, and now. You, you no longer believe these things. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to like tell everybody to keep going with that terrible lifestyle even though you now know the truth, which is it's not good for you and you're probably going to die? No, you're going to you're gonna tell them the truth. And regardless of whether or not the fan base likes it or not, at least you have the ability to tell the truth, which is a virtue. For you as the influencer who's now losing weight, to make that out to be bigotry is fucking wild. I hear these people talking like the body positive community is toxic. True, totally toxic, 100% toxic. And I think a lot of times what happens is like these groups start off in the right, the right space. Like body positivity in and of itself is not a bad idea. Like you should accept yourself in things that you cannot change. Like if you have a big nose, if you have, I don't know, a weird asymmetrical face, me, or if you have things about you that you just cannot change, it's okay. Accept these things about yourself. They're not going to change. So why the fuck are you worrying about them, right? Things like that are okay. But where it got fucked up is where people started going, oh, yeah, it is cool. It is okay that you have a large nose or you don't have legs or things like that. Just in the same way that it's okay that I'm 450, 450 pounds, right? That's completely fine. As they're chugging, drinking chocolate milk, eating tons of chocolate chip donuts and shit. No, it's not the same thing. So the idea of the message is fine. But what the end result was, 
poisoned it. The well has now lo no longer been something that you can drink from. It's it's terrible and disgusting. It was just one of the reasons why when you see these people preaching body positivity, so many people re re recoil from that because they go, oh, body positivity, because they know what it brings. They know, they see what this does to people, dude. Anyway. They wanted me to be unhealthy. It's like, no, those people followed you because they thought it was a safe space. So what are you supposed to do? So like, okay, I understand. They thought it was a safe space, but ultimately... What you did was you created a safe space for toxic, disgusting behavior. It's not a good... You created a safe space for people to be unsafe in, if that makes any sense. Like, you bred people to come to this this area that you crafted of saying it's okay to be fat. Being fat is beautiful. It's not unhealthy. There's nothing wrong with being fat. And now you've come to the realization, like, holy shit. <laughs> no, it's not. It's actually terrible. And then you tell these people it's not a good idea anymore. And then you think that that's a bad thing because the people in that circle should feel safe. Dude, what do you fucking want? It's never, nothing is ever going to be safe. And now granted, I understand like you have a community and you want these people to like, I don't know, feel good around you and things such and so forth. I understand it. But if that's to their own detriment, like if you're telling these people to believe, which basically like Fusezi, a Fusezi, right? Facade, a big fucking illusion, right? Uh, you're telling these people to believe this bullshit and you now know the truth. What are you, what are you, what are you going to do? Like, aren't you going to tell them the truth and hope they benefit from that instead of just keep having them believe the bullshittery and have them just perpetually become unhealthier and unhealthier and unhealthier or in the brain too, they're becoming unhealthier given the fact that they're believing this bullshit, this bask wash, this backwater shit where they weren't going to have to experience the fat phobia and harassment and terrible treatment they experience every day. In Look, the I get it, dude. I really do. I understand it. Like in the, in the world, there are going to be things, there's going to be tough situations that you're going to have to go through. And it's always cool to have an environment that you can go to where you don't have to necessarily deal with that stuff. Right. But the way I like to look at it in this particular scenario is like, you're trying to escape from the reality of your situation in the same way that somebody is trying to escape from the reality of the situation by doing drugs. You understand? Like, in your life, you should not be taking drugs in order to alleviate problems in your life. Most of the time, I would say if you're taking drugs, it should be something like uh, recreationally. Of course, I'm not talking about like prescription things. If you're taking drugs, it'd be some, it should be something that amplifies it. You know what I'm talking about? Like just a short experience. You should always have like a mellow uh, 100%. Let's just say 100% happiness. But that one time that you took that one drug, whatever it may be, it elevates you to 120%, let's say. You shouldn't be at baseline like 20% or baseline 0% and you need to take something that puts you at 100% for five minutes and then you go back down because now you're reliant on it. In the same way that, for instance, if you're fat as fuck and you're dealing with all the problems of that particular condition and then you have to go to an environment to feel like you're safe, and accepted or whatever bullshit, ultimately you do realize that you're shit. You're still in a, a fucking sucky, disgusting area. You're still here. But when you get in these environments, you're, you're up here, right? You're still in a fucked up environment. All that's happening is that you're just putting yourself in a different environment where nobody tells you anything that's bad, which is not necessarily a good thing because you should have the ability to hear things that are bad and take that information, you know, absorb it. And hopefully uh, you, you, when you, Take that information in. It's either you take it in and you 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 accept it as truth, or you rebound it. Right? What oftentimes in these people is they just rebound it because they think that it's all terrible, disgusting information when a lot of it is truthful, good, helpful information. Experience the fat phobia and harassment and terrible treatment they experience every day in the real world, and now without any warning or explanation, you have turn that around and it's no longer a safe space for them. They're gonna be confused. They might be angry. They're probably going to unfollow True. because you built your platform on the opposite. You, you should expect that though, 100%. If you, if you go in preaching one thing and then you realize you were wrong and then you tell people now that you no longer believe that thing, of course there's gonna be some people that are gonna 100% reject that and not want to follow you or at least watch you anymore. What you are doing right now. And that's not to say that weight loss and body positivity are completely incompatible because I think body positivity is unconditional no matter what size your body's at. It's it's crazy because like you can tell these people have no fucking idea. Like it's so crazy to me how I, I can hear these people and they could be productive members of society. Like they, they're smart, intelligent people that are willing and have the ability to do research and understand things. But they're some of the most intolerant people given the fact that I hear them say the most blasphemous shit and they have no like they never think. 
to back check anything they say. It's crazy to me, dude. But like, if your statement is body positivity should be able to like love your body unconstitutionally, that sounds great. But what you're actually saying is like somebody that is negatively suffering, like they're ha they're having all these problems due to the effects of obesity, and you're just telling them that they should just accept their body the way that it is. You should have the ability to look at your body and go, okay. I have these negative, terrible traits. What can I do to alleviate those things? If you can't do anything, then you're, all right, it is what it is, right? If, you don't, if you're you legless and you, you want to run a marathon, odds are you're not going to be able to do that, right? There are certain things that you're not going to be able to do. That's okay. Accept those things. It's all right. You don't need to have legs to enjoy life. You just need to now understand that this is not a part of your life. It's okay, right? There's plenty of things that I would love to do. Be a strong, busky, massive dude with big biceps and ginormous pectoral muscles. And you know what I'm saying? Like hurl big rocks. I would love to do that thing. Probably because I never had the ability to do those things. I probably wouldn't even like to do those things if I was that size, right? I don't know because I've never had those experiences. But if you're telling people in those scenarios, it's okay, it is okay. But for fat people, it doesn't make sense because these people are literally... They have something that they can change. It is possible for the change. 99% of people, give or take disabilities, they have the ability to lose weight. It's not as hard as a lot of these people would sit there and tell you it is. So if you can benefit from it, if there is an influencer, which I hate that fucking word. It's, it's so fucking disgusting. I feel like I'm, I'm saying like Voldemort's name when I say influencer. But if you are an influencer, a plus size influencer, a body positivity, fat acceptance, whatever influencer, and you've been spewing bullshit out of your throat for like years and years at a time. And suddenly now you come to the realization that what you've been saying has been blasphemous bullshit. We've all been there. And now you want to tell people the truth. You should, you should now given you will 100% suffer for that, but at least you're telling the truth and you can help people. At least you get a few people out of that bracket. You can be body because if it if it's coming from you, then these people know that it has value. You were somebody that was saying this shit for God knows how long, and now suddenly you're not saying it anymore, and you're saying the opposite of that. A lot of people are gonna look at that and go, "Whoa, hold up, this person was deep in this, but now they're now they're like so far out of this realm, and they're like shit talking it." I have to figure out why. Maybe some people are gonna believe you over some other people, right? Well, because I think body positivity is unconditional, no matter what size your body's at, and you can be body positive at any size. And that's kind of the point. But a lot of y'all are throwing fat people under the bus and saying really gross and mean things. If you want to be accepted, you could be accepted in the body positivity space. But I think you guys got to come to the realization that like the body positivity space is not about being fat. You guys can be there while being fat, but I would never consider being fat as like a prerequisite of becoming a part of the organization, if that makes any sense. Both about your former self and by extension, also about the people that still follow you. So please just don't act like people deciding they don't want to see your content anymore is like somehow oppressive to you. Of course, fat I agree. I agree with that last sentiment. Positivity didn't last. Because for many people, that transition from fear- And I fucking hate acrylics so bad, dude. You're not giving hand jobs with acrylics, dude. Fuck off me, man. You kidding me, dude? You're not giving hand jobs. You're not doing shit. And I, you know, I, I really- Here's the thing. I understand that I I know some women that would go, I'm not getting acrylics for guys. I'm not doing that because I'm going to show you right now. I'm, I've talked to a lot of gentlemen in my life and a lot of different types of gentlemen. I talked to black dudes. I talked to Indian guys, Mexican dudes. I've talked to dudes from the Middle East, right? A whole smorgasbord of men, right? A charcuterie board or whatever they call those things of men. And every single one of them without failure, 100% of them, if I ask them, I go, hey, man, do you like when women wear acrylics? Every single one of them will go, no, that is gross. I do not like it. Now, I grant 100%. Yes. Yes. You can do it for yourself. You can 100%. Totally. Do it for yourself. You can. Go ahead. But I heard so many women go, I do it because I want to look pretty for dudes or I like I'm doing this because I want to like show off my natural finger length or whatever the hell. And I always go, for who? Like, you know, like it's got to be just for you because dudes are looking, dudes are looking at that and going, ew, that's unpractical. How are we going to do anything? I'm, I'm going to let you know right now. Whenever a guy sees acrylics, he's thinking, how do you, how do you wipe your butt? That's what he's thinking. That's what he's thinking. hundred percent. In the same way that when men walk into a room for the first time and they go like this, like they try to like accentuate their chest and they look down at the dick to see like if that guy got some big shit. I actually been told that men, when they walk into a room, like a lot of dudes will do like that dap up, that man hug to see if they're like to, to meet to meet to see if they have a bigger meat than them just to really compare. Because having a big meat in 2024, 
super incentive. Like, I don't care what anybody says. Sure, women don't have the vaginal canal to really fulfill the amount of meat that is really just being, like, thrown out today. I mean, grant, like, I don't think most dudes have more than six inches. But a lot of dudes nowadays do have more than six inches, or at least that's, like, the perceived outcome of a lot of these guys. And I know, like, the vaginal canal can only take, like, five at most or something like that. It doesn't matter. Okay, it's about the the idea of having a man walk into the room and having his knees be buckling because his meat is so massive that the tip of his shit is like a big bell and it's like slapping against his kneecaps. So he's like artificially creating like bow leggedness. Like if his knees were like this organically, because his meat keeps like slapping against his his like a pendulum, you know, across his legs, that what happens is his knees go like this, like over time, because his dick is so massive. Anyway. Fear of being ridiculed. Because for many people, that transition from fear of being ridiculed for having ridiculed someone never transitioned into actual acceptance and appreciation of fat people. They just didn't want to say what they thought out loud because other people would think they were a bad person for it. What are you talking it about? It never actually changed how they thought and what they believed internally. So you're saying like people infiltrated the body positivity space under the guise of accepting people for being body positive and they saw fat people and like, nah, nah, not them. No, <laughs> not those people. I mean, that makes a little sense, dude. You guys are, you, I don't know why you guys want to be everywhere, dude. And you always want to make it seem like you're super oppressed for some reason. What are you oppressed by, dude? You're, the only thing oppressing you is gravity. There's nothing else, okay? Now, I understand you could sit there and go stairs, lack of elevator access, chairs, things like that, armrest, which is crazy, by the way. You have all these things that you complain about, but most of this shit is just because you decided to become fat. And I know that a lot of people will sit there and go, David, I didn't become fat. Dude, look, okay? There's a few people on the planet that might be fat for no fault of their own, sure. But if you're an adult, especially here in the West, in America, Canada, other places like this, you have the ability to not have that particular food. You can substitute it. You can choose better food. You can just, I don't know, skip a meal or two. I don't know. Sometimes it's not a bad idea. I would not advocate for that. I would always recommend people to eat three times a day, have good, nutritious food, not like five donuts. Keep in mind, five donuts, if each donut was like 400 calories, that's it for the rest of the day. And how often, dude... I can swallow down three donuts right now. You could watch me do that shit. I would have no problem suckling, suck a three donuts in my mouth. Nope. Chocolate glazed? No problem, dude. I love that shit in my mouth. All in my mouth. Get that fucking chocolateness in my throat. And I would have no problem with that. How many more people do you think? Like, if I eat three, that's 400 each, maybe even 500. Let's just say 500. That's 1,500, dude. What am I going to eat one time more for the rest of that day? Fuck no. I'm going to have good, nutritious meals. I'm going to be eating eggs. I'm going to have eggs in my mouth instead of um, chocolateness. At all. That monologue continued on the same. They just felt the need to be quiet about it. Which was exactly the critique of people during the body positivity movement warning that, hey, this isn't rooted in anything um, substantial. It's all about, hey, feel good about your body. What happens? That's when not what it is, man. I'm sick of these people not knowing what body positivity while saying that they're like the pros, like they're the ones that advocate for it so heavily. These people are so incredibly fucking ignorant and they'll sit there and try to tell you that they know exactly what they're talking about. You have no idea what body positivity is. If you're sitting here saying that body positivity should be like everybody accepting their body exactly the way there is, that's totally wrong okay if you are missing legs fine accept your body if you are 450 pounds of all fat you can do something about that you don't have to accept that there is a difference between accepting it and acknowledging it okay acknowledge it is way better than accepting it in the sense of like you, you if you're accepting it there's nothing you can do about it it's just the way you are but if you acknowledge it at least you can make changes proactively to improve your health because being that weight is not good i don't care what anybody says and that ends and so now we're seeing a rise of fat positive and fat creators losing weight and shitting on people who haven't period as they should as they should if you're fat and you started to lose weight that's good for you delicious oh you're looking so good today because of all that weight loss because you decided to better yourself become more liquidated and decided that the weight wasn't helping you that is a good thing don't feel bad about it don't have these people feel don't have these people thinking that you're a bad person you are not a bad person if you decided to lose weight for that benefit of health you're a good person good job you are delicioso in so many ways 
Y'all be wondering why the plus size clothes don't sell. Nobody wonders that. Who I, is buying the that? The yeah. The mini mouse, Mickey Mouse. I thought I should have known. I'll agree, dude. This this is kind of. Yeah, this ain't this ain't it. That's it's terrible, man. What is this, Moo Moo's, man? This is something that this is what something your great grandmother would wear because she had nothing else to wear and she was going through like prohibition and she also lived through the Great Depression. This is something they would wear, or like maybe like grandma would wear this during during like a '90s sitcom. Like she would come in wearing this. Like it would be um, it would be the guy that played as Dan from Roseanne. Who's that guy's name? He I just imagine him. In the 90s. You remember how fat he was in the 90s, dude? What's that guy's name, dude? Whatever. He comes in, and he's got a big gut, but he's got, like, a wig on, and he's got a moo-moo. That's what I imagine if you're wearing any of this. It looks gross. I'll give I'll give them that. You said it's the Minnie Mouse, Mouse, Mickey Mouse, Mouse combo. Gave it away. It gave it away. Yeah. You said the Minnie Mouse, Mickey Mouse combo. You said we want to I'm going to keep it a bug, Anaheim, dude. Your you? style is already not the best. All right, can we just be honest for a second? Can I go ahead and look at what you was wearing real quick? It's Samira. So people who haven't. I'll be one. I'll be one. Shut the fuck up, dog. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep it a buck with you, okay? Look, I know that I don't dress the best. I get it. But I'm never really, you know, I, I know it. I know I don't dress the best. You're coming at this. You, this, I think, I think Samira is a model or something like that. What the fuck are you wearing, then? What is that, huh? What are you, like a backup singer for Britney Spears in 2004? What are you doing, man? It's not, man, dude. It's, it, it real deal be the people that have the biggest opinions on what how what clothes should look like and then you know dress like man come on dude this combo you said we want to be in anaheim all year round <laughs> listen i don't know it's giving easter special display. i don't know what's going on let me see your friend no i don't like it i don't like it let me see your friend i don't like it i don't like let me see your friend okay <laughs> dude okay not the shoes that the 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 wig not it dude i don't care i don't care orange hair dude come on come on dude what are we doing what are we doing right now it's not good it's not good what are you trying to role play is that one girl from ninth element with all right whatever man go ahead go off queen this has potential this has i don't even know why it matters to be honest dude like if you're sitting here and you're big as hell i'm gonna keep it a buck okay I don't know why so many of these fat acceptance people have such high opinions on the clothes they wear, given the fact that they ain't living past 35, right? And now I want them to live past 35. I really do. And I also want them to have access to clothes. I think that's important. But I just don't know why they have such big opinions. <laughs> that's a bad choice of words. Such large experience, uh, opinions on the clothes Given the fact that nothing they wear is going to look appetizing in a very general speaking sense, dude. It's very crazy to me that you guys want to focus so heavily on something. Given the fact that most of you are literally on death's door. Like if there's a ring doorbell, you, you see you on the like you're the pearly gates of, he of heaven. And you're ringing the ring doorbell, dude, every fucking day. That's how close you guys are. You guys are suffering beyond belief every single day. Given the fact that you guys have so many health problems. And you know what? I don't know if Samira's having health problems right now. I don't know. I, I, I guess that she would. It may not be any that she registers in the sense of like, you know, when you wake up and you think, eh, you know, I have a pain, but it's not a big deal, right? As you get older, you slowly start to realize things become more and more less accessible to you. I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a, a really good example. This thumb, I used to be able to crack it a lot, okay? Now, I can't. Now, I, full, I, I can do all the things that I used to do with my hands. No problem. I have no problems with my hands. But this thumb, I can't push down past this point, okay? And it sucks a lot of dick when I lift weights because it hurts sometimes when I have to wrap my hands around it. So I always do suicide grip now. That's some bitch shit. And there's really nothing I can do about it, right? So I have to just put up with that. You understand? It's been like this for like two years at this point. I just acknowledge that I'm getting older and that I'm going to have things that are not going to be the most optimal things. And it's only because my body's being a bitch about things like that. And it is it's what it is, right? And the point I'm making is I'm already having issues like this. And this is a small issue. Like this is really all I have in terms of like a really big issue on my body right now. I don't even want to know the issues that Samira or any of these fat acceptance people are having on a daily basis. Given the fact that they're literally quadruple the sizes that they should be, I couldn't even begin to fathom the amount of problems that they're having that they just probably swipe under the rug because they don't register them as problems given that they live like this for so long in their life you understand it's like being in an abusive relationship 
You know, like you probably, if you don't know anything different, then how are you going to know this is a bad thing, right? How do you know that your boyfriend beating you up or your girlfriend calling you a brokey and always tormenting you, whatever? How do you know it's a bad thing if you don't have any other experiences to draw from, right? It's like that. And it's terrible because I know these people's lives could be improved immeasurably. I know they could, but they just refuse to do anything. And it's like not even the same thing either because like they refuse to acknowledge it and they will fight. They will die on the hill of fatness is okay. Fatness doesn't cause problems. And it just angers me so heavily because I know that they could be doing so much more in the, in the spectrum of health and they could be wiping away problems that they don't even like a lot of these problems could just be completely alleviated. But they just refuse to because they'll just die in the hill of fat acceptance, man. That's true. It doesn't. It's the pattern. <laughs> There's no shape, though. It's the pattern. It's just clothes. Nobody cares about the shape. If Okay, whatever, dude. Now, who... Did you wear this dress? Yeah, I did. That's, 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 <laughs> that's, that's, that's the one. That's when I came up with. No. Huh? Damn. Damn. Hair is dry. I'm going to keep it a buck, okay? Look, I'm going to keep it a buck. I've dated black ladies. I have. I've dated a lot of black ladies. And I know about the procedures, and I've dated a black lady that did a lot of things with their hair, bro. Mayonnaise! All this other stuff, right? This is dry. It's dry. I gotta keep it a buck. It's dry. It's a lot of dead ends, too. Um, whew. Anyway. I like the pink so. pants. The pink pants. I don't want pink, so I might be okay with it. But. Oh, look, the belt. To the fat girls and fat people watching this and like you're wondering like, oh my God, am I going to be treated differently when I lose weight? That question is that is absolutely fucking I, I Look, I know I might come off a little bit racially insensitive here, dude. I know that baby hairs are so, man, this fucking thing is hooked up to a lot of wires, man. I would be concerned about that. I know that Latinas and black ladies do the baby hairs. I don't know why so many of them almost kind of like unite them to the eyebrows. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I like baby hairs, but sometimes they come off a little bit too strong. Or when I see a lot of women, this is not even a black lady thing, I see so many women just placing, it's fine to wear a wig. Like, I'm totally for wig gang, right? But sometimes I see these ladies putting on wigs, and it's almost kind of like touching their eyebrows. And I just think, what the fuck do you think is that? Like, what if I'm looking upon that with my eyes, and I'm seeing that, do you think that I think that's real? Like, isn't the entire purpose of a wig to give the illusion that this is your natural hair. I mean, unless you're like fucking George Washington, your role playing is like Thomas Jefferson or something like that, sure. But you know what I'm talking about. Like most people are wearing wigs because they want to wear them for like aesthetic purposes, which is fine. But sometimes I see people putting on wigs and I can see exactly where the wig line starts. And I shouldn't have to do that given that I'm a dude. And I like the only experience I have with wigs is like watching Jeffree Star or like other people on YouTube, which I shouldn't even be watching because I'm a heterosexual male. And it makes people question whether or not I even am a heterosexual male because they always go, how do you know so much about makeup? How do you know so much about wigs? I don't know. I dated women. Okay. And you catch on to things. All right, dude. Have you never helped a girl with her hair? Have you ever not like, oh, I'm going to put this weave in. Can you hold this? Can you do that? You catch on to things. I'm not I'm not like a mindless drone, okay? I've dated women. I understand that there are ways to like install wigs properly and the the cutting of the straps, the lace whatever, dude. I I the blending, I get it. I know how it fucking works. Not like I'm I'm a very basic bitch when it comes to a lot of that stuff. But I don't know. Anyway, I just critique it a lot because I just feel like it could be done better. Like I was watching a video and it was like Cardi B and I swear I saw her wig. It was so crazy because it was like on her ears and I saw it. It was like a great wig on the front, but it's like the people, I guess they fucked up and they forgot to cut around the ear because like the lace was on her ear and I was just looking at that, but they blended it, which is crazy. So you just expect me to think that you only got like half a ear. Okay, whatever, dude. I mean, whatever, man, whatever. Absolutely. Society, am I going to be treated differently when I lose weight? That question is that is absolutely fucking lutely. Period. Society is so fat phobic, and when people meet you, they only see that you're fat. It doesn't matter. Like, when I was fat. I agree. I think that this, this is one, one of the main, this should be, like, one of the indicators for you to lose weight. A lot of times, first impressions matter, and you know it, then I know it. When you go to a job interview, what are you doing? You're dressing. You're, you're wearing the boat shoes. You're coming in with a dressed up shirt. You're doing your hair. You're probably getting a haircut. You're shaving. If you're a girl, I don't know what you do. Probably doing all that same stuff, right? I know some girls with mustaches. What are you going to do? They're Latinas. And when you go there, you want to impress with the way that you look, right? Now, if you're coming in there with a wife beater, you got spaghetti stains on your shit. You're coming in there wearing like Tim's and an ankle bracelet. You think that guy's going to hire you? Fuck no. Unless he's like hiring you to be like a drug dealer on a show or something like that. Maybe. But most of the time, you're going there to be 
um, you're trying to dress to impress. And this goes for almost everything in life. People that are more attractive get more attention. They get better things. I don't know what else to tell you than that. It's just what it is. You want to be around attractive people. I want to be around attractive people. It's just how we are as humans. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying acknowledge it so that and make your decisions based off those things. If you're going to play the game, you should at least know how it's how it works, right? Understand the rules. So 100%, if you're a fat person, depending on what you're doing in your life, you're going to be seen as a fat person. That's just what it is. But you're not just a fat person. You're not even a fat person. You're just a person with fat on you. And this is what I always try to relay to so many people. You don't have to be fat. It's completely possible for you to take yourself and transform yourself into a more productive human being in the sense of like losing that weight, becoming healthier, becoming more active, becoming more attractive. These things are super possible for you. And don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. And when I hear people talking about this shit, Yes, it's true. People don't want to be around fat people because they see this person suffering on a daily basis. Now, there's different levels of being fat. And also, fatness doesn't apply to everybody equally. If you're a bigger guy and you're somebody that's 250 and it doesn't look like you're 250, this won't apply to you to the same degree that if you're like a five foot two girl and you weigh 250. It doesn't, it's not going to look the same and you're just not going to apply the same, right? It's kind of like being black, right? Being black in our society nowadays is like very ambiguous in the sense of like who can do what, who can say what. Everybody knows, or I didn't know for a while, that Logic was a black guy. Logic, the rapper, is a black guy. A lot of people had a problem with the fact that he said the N-word, right? But then he was like, oh, uh, why? I'm black. What are you talking about? And it just comes down to perception. Like if people see you and they go, that's a white guy. You can't say that. I'm going to beat you up. And they go, no, actually, I'm a black dude. And then they go, oh. I don't know. Anyway, the point I'm making is perception matters, all right? The, the way you look matters. So fat phobic, and when people meet you, they only see that you're fat. It doesn't matter, like, when I was fatter and bigger, I was, like, just, like, oh, the funny fat girl. Like, she's funny and she's fat. And now that I've lost a significant amount of weight, I've lost, like, a whole other person. Cool. It's, like, everybody, all my comments now are, like, when I would just make videos making jokes and talking, they would be, like, they talk about the music. Now it's, like, Fanita, you're so pretty. You're so gorgeous. You're so this. Guys come out of the woodworks to try to talk to me now. Guys approach me, like, even walking down the street, people smile at me now. Like I don't know why this is, like, surprising. If you don't look, when you're fat, you look like all the other fat people. And I mean that in the most general way possible, in the sense of, like, you obviously have different features and things like that, and things are going to be accentuated differently. But if you're moon facing and you're comparing yourself to another guy that's moon facing, dude, it's like, I don't know what you look like realistically. Like, I don't know what your bone structure looks like. I don't know if you have really like good face genetics. A lot of people that are fat look fat and that's just what it is. But when you slim down, you have a jawline, you have a forehead, you have bone structure. I see where your shoulder starts. I see where your knees start. I see your leg muscles. I see more of you. Isn't that crazy that when you're fatter, I see less of you, but when you're thinner, I see more of you. You know why that is? Because as human beings, we're intrinsically, we're intrinsically looking at these features, right? And especially if you're talking about dudes, 100%. Dudes are super visual, right? 100%. They're going to see things on you and go, wow, that girl looks really pretty. And people in general, girls, 100%. They 100% they compare with other girls, right? So yeah, man. Um, wouldn't that be a good thing, though, that you lost weight and now everybody's looking at you as like a completely different person? You look way better and things like that. It's true. It's true, okay? I don't know what else to say than that. It's a good thing, actually, to lose weight and have all these features now be accentuated. Good for you for losing that entire another person. I bet you feel better. I bet you feel more confident. I bet, generally speaking, you just probably are better. Woodworks, to try to talk to me now, guys approach me, like, even walking down the street, people smiling at me now, like, I'm no longer, like, invisible. And thankfully, I didn't have it as bad as some fat people do because of my personality. Mm -hmm. So I was always, like, still popular. And also, I didn't even realize I was fat until I got on the internet. Because, like, my friends never ever said anything about yeah, my weight. that's like true, dude. Oh. Oh, man, dude. This is so bad, actually. If you if you have friends around you and they are people that just think that they're never going to talk to you about something because they know it's going to start conflict or maybe they think that they're just doing you a favor by not talking about something like that. And then you get on the internet, 100%. People are going to tell you the fucking truth. They are 100% going to tell you the truth. They're like children. Um, being a children myself, I understand this for a fact and being around a bunch of children, right? It's obvious that these dudes are brutal. They'll, you'll come up to a kid and he'll go, you look like Mario and you go, all right, dude, like, pff, fuck you. First of all, dude, what the fuck, man? Like, I don't take offense to it, but just out of nowhere, like starting a conversation like that, bro, what are you doing? You know, I knew a girl that had a, like an acne problem and this kid came up. It was like, Hey, uh, what are those fucking dirty bumps on your face? And, um, they just say shit. They just say shit. And you know what? I think that's one of the beautiful things about children in a, in, in a very, very general sense. Is like they're just 
They don't give a fuck. They don't understand social cues, and that's awesome. That's so cool, man. And I, part of me wishes that I still had a little bit of that in me, but since I've been in, like indoctrinated in society and understanding that you have to be nice to people and things like that, there's, there's gives and takes to it. But the internet's like that because there's like a, a, a more whole sense of amenity, so people are more willing to be like, "Yo, you look like a uh, kung fu panda," you know. You except you, you don't you're not as cool as Jack Black. And they'll just say things to you, right? I remember literally being on Call of Duty when I was like 14 or 15 or even 16 years old. And some nine-year-old told me he he's having sex with my mom. He was just saying that shit. He was like, oh, I'm giving your mom. I'm giving your mom that sloppy dick sandwich. I'm fucking piping her down right now. She's giving me that gob swallow. That was every day. That was every day a nine-year-old would tell me. I, then I, I, you know, for a long time, I thought my mom was a virgin, a beautiful, pure, amazing virgin. But apparently, uh, you know, everybody was having sex with her. I didn't know that, you know. But that's just what the internet is. You have to accept it for a while. It's beautifulness and it's disgustingness. So if you're going on the internet and you think that's going to be kind to you, it will. But it also will be equally terrible. But, uh, yeah, having friends that don't tell you the truth is not a good thing, by the way. And also, I didn't realize I was fat until I got on the internet. Because, like, my friends never, ever said anything about yeah, my weight. Like, yeah. I, I was really popular. I've Which got... is not a good thing, by the way. Those are not... They might be real friends, but I feel like friends, friends, if they're realistic friends, they should tell you about the problems that you have, and they should actually tell you about the problems that you have. Not just bring it up passively. Not just go, oh, uh, I don't know, Sarah, like... Yeah, you look pretty good. I mean, you could look better and then just end it there. Never talk about it ever again. And then you think you were a good person because you said something kind of a little bit towards the center of like losing weight. When in reality, you didn't really say anything at all because it was just like a passing whatever, dude. Like talk to them. Actually have conversations because like friends are such a unique commodity. Not many people have them. And anybody that knows this, right, will know this, that when you leave high school, you don't have friends. You have very limited people. Like when you're in high school, you have a thousand friends. But when you leave high school, you got four. And when you go through your 20s, you have less than that. You have two and then maybe three at most. And those are real friends. You would hope these people would stop you and go, dude, I love you, but these things need to be adjusted. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Who else would you want to hear that from than your friends? Of course, friends uh, and family, but friends especially. Dude, friends, man, if you got good ones, they'll, they'll, do, they'll do you dirty, but they'll also do it in a good way. That is all the parties and all this shit. So, like, I never even, like, really understood how, like, big I was. And I feel like, for me now, like, sometimes this is, like, I used to be able to say certain things when I was fat. And this goes into another thing I'm about to talk about. Hi, my name is Megan. Are we still talking about Roman empires? Because, um, mine is the fact that, like... I, you know what, how true that statement was? Like, guys thinking about the Roman empire? You know, I would say... During COVID, I probably did three months worth of Roman Empire research. And this was before the whole trend or anything like that. And the reason was, was because I was building an entire Roman like city in a Minecraft world. And I was just watching videos on the side while I was doing it. Like anytime I had free time, I would watch like four hour long documentaries about the Roman Empire. I know shit about their taxation codes. I know about how they pooped. I know about how they transitioned from the... Um, the Republic to the Empire and how it was not even like a really drastic change. I know about all the plebeians. I know about, dude, I know so much shit about the Roman Empire. It's crazy. And anyway, I'm not flexing or anything like that, but it is true. Like a lot of dudes do, like, I, I, whatever. I've, I've just always wanted to be skinny. So lose weight. You can do it. I believe in you. It's not a far-fetched idea. If you've always, you know, it's crazy. Okay. I've always wanted to be a Jedi. Can you believe that? I've always wanted to be like, oh, yes, I can pick stuff up and, you know, or at the bare minimum, I want to be able to whip out my, my penis and just have like the glow, blue, blue glow, right? At the bare minimum, because I feel like that's probably a real world equivalent of having a lightsaber. I don't want it to like burn my hands or anything like that, obviously. And if you're a real dude, you don't even touch your dick at all if you're ever peeing. I don't know why so many people think, David, you don't wash your hands when you pee? No, no, I don't. You know why? I'm just in there like this. I'm just like this. Oh, yeah. I don't spill it. I, don't, I lift up the seat, dude. I'm good. I aim perfectly, okay? I know my dick can do backflips. That's how fucking calculized I am when it comes to peeing. And I feel like most guys can. You think guys are like handling their shit like a fire hose? When women pee, I, I've peeped this. When women pee, it's like a fire hydrant. It's crazy. It sounds like when they open the floodgate on a brand new dam. It's fucking crazy. When guys pee, it's a solid stream. Okay? It's a solid stream. There's not like, 
no, it's not like that. So I don't have my dick just, you know, flopping around and shit like that. It doesn't do that. It just, you just do shit, right? Clean stream, write out the thing, you know, whatever. The, and when I'm done, I know some women think, do you like take the toilet paper and pat it? What do you know? What are you talking about, dude? Do, no, we don't do that. We just shake. You know, and sometimes you do it to a, a song, shake, 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 shake it, yeah. and then you're done. You rap, you just pull up your, your shit, go, go about your day, dude. That's why men are better, because we can shake our dicks. No, we're not better because of that. We're better because mustaches, obviously. No, nope, some Latinas can have mustaches too. Damn, we don't have anything. But losing weight is super possible. I believe in this woman. It's not an unachievable task in the same way that, for instance, I want to be a Jedi. I want to be a Jedi. I'm never going to be a Jedi. That's okay. You don't, you want to be skinny. You could be skinny. Do it. And I know that like skinny can have a negative connotation. It can have a negative connotation in what? Like you're getting too attractive. You're getting too healthy. I guess if that's what you want to go for. I've always just wanted to be thin, petite, cool, small. You can do it. And I know that no matter how much weight I lose, Unless I do it in a very unhealthy way, I am never going to be petite. You're just yeah, dumb. You're dumb. You're dumb. I want to look like Arnold. I want to. I want to look like Arnold. But I'm never going to look like Arnold. But that's okay. Because I can get close enough for me to be satisfied. You can have big muscles. I got biceps. I got nice pectoral muscles. My back looks all right. Right? You can do things to make yourself look better. And you can have an image that you wish to aspire to, but if you're never going to reach the rank of petite, for instance, that's okay. I don't know why you would think that because you can never reach this particular example of what you think is super attractive, that somehow that means that's not a good thing. Fuck you. I don't care if you ne- if you could never reach the rank of petite. You can get pretty damn close and you can look good while doing it. You don't have to be petite to be beautiful. You don't have to be petite to be healthy. You don't have to be petite to be very attractive. I don't give a fuck what you say. That's not even a good example. That's like somebody saying, that's like somebody saying, I want a bajillion dollars, but I'm I'm only making a hundred thousand a year. God damn, nagget. Like, what are you talking about, man? That's still good. That's fucking amazing, dude. Look at what you got and work off that. It's okay that you'll never be Arnold or Ronnie or any of these guys. You don't have to be. Just be yourself, the best version of yourself. You don't have to be petite. You could still be looking good you know, uh, petite usually means that you're a smaller person, right? She, I don't know. Like, it, it, it's such a dumb way of thinking about this shit. And again, you don't need to be unhealthy to lose weight. That's the worst way of thinking about it. I'm sick of these people looking at losing weight as an unhealthy practice. You are unhealthy while you're fat. Can we just acknowledge that? That is a baseline. That is a default. If you are fat, especially if you're obese, default unhealthy. If you lose weight, the practice of losing weight is going to be Generally speaking, unhealthy in the sense of you're lowering calories. Not at first, by the way. If you're like eating 4,000 calories and you lower it to 3,500, that's not unhealthy. You're still eating too much, but you're still lowering it, which is good. Eventually, you're going to have to get to an unhealthy practice, which is okay, though, because the end goal is superior health. You understand? Like you have to do a little suffering to get to where you need to go. And when you get there, you're good. You don't need to worry about it anymore. So you're trading one unhealthy practice for this other unhealthy practice, which is really not unhealthy at all, but you can consider it to be unhealthy because I'm trying to like work with you here. But when you finally get through that, that suffering period of not being able to eat what you want to eat, which I think eventually you'll realize it's the right practice. A lot of people, when they lose weight, they think it's a crazy far-fetched idea and it's crazy. It's like so hard to do, but then you get used to it and then you start doing it. Then it's a default and you just like work it into your everyday life and then it just becomes your norm. And then once you reach that level of whatever level you want it to reach, you're good. You're good. You, you, you're no longer held down by the restrictions of being tied to your body, being imprisoned by this obesity. You understand? Anyway, that's my little like inspirational speech for you. If you don't want to be, if you want to be petite, that's okay. But if you can't be petite, don't let it shit on you. It's fine. I'm not built to be petite. It's okay. I'm built to haul potatoes. <laughs> Why are you crying? Like, first of all, dude, that's like, maybe this is like really emotional topic for you. I just really don't know why you would even think about crying on TikTok, man. I don't know. What kind of like emotions do you think that people are going to get from this? You think people are going to feel bad for you because you can't be petite? Such a weird way of even like, what the fuck are you talking about right now? Like, that'd be like me literally going on here be like, guys, 
oh, I'm like 150 pounds. I just want to be 250 pounds of pure muscle. And I don't think I can ever do it because I'm not as strong. I'm not as big as Arnold. Like, I'm going to just cry here because I can never reach. Dude, what kind? What do you think people are going to say to me? Get over it. You're a bitch. You can still look good. You don't have to be petite. It's okay. Why is this the, the goal for you? Why are you setting... When you set goals, make them unrealistic. Make them realistic. Don't set ridiculous goals that you're never gonna fucking reach and make make it seem like it's gonna be like, and then now you're gonna fail ridic regardless of what you do because the goals are so ridiculous that you're never gonna achieve them. If your goal is to be petite and you're never going to be petite, why is it a goal? Why the fuck is it a goal? That doesn't make any sense. Make realistic goals. Your goal should be look healthier, be healthier, and then in the, the, the consequences of that are attractiveness <laughs> and make it through a famine you know like that's not <sighs> what are you what what kind of mentalities are you working with these people are so these people are dumb my body is built to make it through famine every human being is supposed to make it through famine. You can survive days without eating. You know that, right? Like, that's how it was for a long period of time. Most animals nowadays don't even eat daily, right? Like wolves, they take literally, I think it's like one out of 20 hunts are successful. They're not eating for days. Same thing with lions, same thing with days. You're not special. It's a privilege to be able to eat every single day. You know that? So it's a dumb, it's a dumb way of looking at it. I'll never be petite because my body was built to survive a famine. Yeah, I know. Everybody's body was built to survive a fucking famine. It's a dumbass point. I am not a small person. Yeah. And I hate the fact. How old are you? Can we just talk about that for a second? This is like, these are the type of things that I hear somebody say when they're like a teenager and they start to realize that this is like what they're going to have to work with for the rest of their life. And they go, I just wish I was this. I just wish I was that. I just wish I was this. Usually when you get into your 20s, you start recognizing it's all right. Like, it's just what it is. Like, I got this. This is the cards I was dealt. It is what it is. You're, it looks like you. You're at least in your 20s, like late 20s, right? Why did it take you this long? You, do, you How are you still at that point? You, uh, okay. That I have determined my self-worth on something that I cannot control. You don't need to control it. So many times in my life. Using this as an excuse to not lose weight, though, is crazy. Like, this is ultimately what that is. Like, you're saying, I don't, I will never be this, therefore I should not lose weight because I cannot achieve that. You are are mentally deranged if you are honestly saying that this is a reason why you should not lose weight because you'll never be petite that is ridiculous that is actually such a crazy point just because you won't be petite doesn't mean you won't be healthy you could still lose weight you can still be beautiful you could still have so much about you that's amazing you don't have to be petite you could be beautiful without being petite i'm not the biggest strongest man on the world but i know i can be more handsome i know i can build more muscle i don't need to be arnold or ronnie you can be who you are in a better version of yourself oh my god There are so many, so many instances that I can think of that I thought, well, I'm not as small as she is. <laughs> I'll never be worthy of that. You're like 30. You're 30. <sighs> and even though I lost like 55 pounds over the past Good. year. Fantastic. It never feels like it's going to be enough. I don't know if I'm ever going to look at myself and think it's been enough. Why are you crying? You're you're in a groan. Be emotional. Be emotional. Go ahead. Be emotional, guys. I'm not saying not to be emotional. It is a strong trait to cry. But here's the thing. I think people think the idea of crying being a strong trait, it's so you're supposed to cry around the right people. You're not supposed to cry around people that are going to judge you and say negative things like the internet. That's a guarantee. It, I'm a, I'm not going to like shame her for crying. I just think it's not a good place. I say this anytime I see somebody crying on camera. Not a good place. I don't care how great your community is. It's not a good place to cry. Cry around your friends, your mom, your brother, your, your, your father, dude. You cry around those people because that's the virtue. That's the virtuous part. You're crying around people who actually care about you enough to not judge you in a negative way like the internet is going to. That's the virtuous part. It's not a virtue. It's not a strong trait. 
to go on TikTok and cry about things that are just is bullshit. It's just like, what are you talking about, man? Like, I'm not trying to say that what you're feeling is not bullshit, but it's just like you you got to understand to a certain degree that it's okay that things about you are not things that you like. You understand? And I'm not here to shit on you for those things, but you're a grown woman, dude. You should acknowledge that the internet's not the place for this, okay? It's just not. It's not powerful either, too, to look into the camera while you cry. I'm sure there are plenty of dudes out there that are going to watch this video and beat off to that shit. And I'm so grateful for where I am. And I do feel very grateful for for the path that I've that I followed because I feel like it has helped me relate to a lot of people it shouldn't be about relating to a lot of people it should be about you okay but I can't help to think but how much easier my life would have been huh. if I had been born huh. <laughs> what never think like this never think like this at all this is a bullshit point. Never, ever, never put yourself in a scenario of, I wonder if my life would have been better if I was, everybody's life could have been, it would have, could have been improved if they were born in another place, in another time, in another scenario. There are endless possibilities if somebody's life could have been improved, even in a very realistic sense. You could have been born in a household of two parents that cared about you deeply, that never divorced, that have a gajillion dollars, that sent you to private school, that instilled great values in you, that really forced you to work hard and gave you that opportunity to work hard and realistic in real life. But not everybody was born like that. Not everybody had the ability to have two parents. Not everybody had the ability to have parents that weren't divorced. Not everybody had the ability to have non-abusive parents. Not, a, not everybody had the ability to have people that were rich. You understand how I'm looking? You, you see what I'm talking about? It's really important to not look at it like this because it's a, a bullshit talking point. It's never going to help you to wonder, oh, I wonder if I would, my life would be better if I was, if my parents were this or I look like that or if I had superpowers because that's ultimately what I'm hearing from this. Like you, you're wondering if you woke up, like if you were born as a fucking super saiyan, would your life be better? Yes. Yes. It would be better. It would be so much better. If you woke up and you were Goku, yes, oh, you could fly and shoot a Kamehameha and put your hands up in the sky and ask people for energy and throw spirit bombs at other plants. Oh, so great. But it doesn't matter because why are you even thinking about that? It doesn't matter. It's like that one girl that said, I can't get boyfriends because I'm fat. And then she hated on me because I told her what she could do in order to get boyfriends. And then she said that I'm not, I'm being too realistic about it. I'm sorry that I'm giving you real world advice and you're looking at it in the realm of like maybes or like what it should be. It's never going to help you. It's not good to think about your life in a what if scenario. And it's a crazy ass what if scenario because you wouldn't even be the same. You wouldn't even be the same person if you were a different person. So you would just. All right. All right. As a petite girl or as someone who just didn't take up as much space. Shut the fuck up, dude. I wonder what it'd be like if I woke up and I was like, I was born as like a six foot three, 250, big, busky, ginormous man that could shoot marshmallows out of his eyes. You know, I wonder what the world could be. You see how dumb this shit is? Don't worry about it. Stop worrying about it. Worry about what you can do in order to improve yourself. There are cards that you dealt, right? And they may not be the best cards, but they're your cards. Play with your cards. Just because it's not a winning hand doesn't mean you can't bluff and win a few games. You understand? How do you know your hand is even worse than another person's hand? You can still benefit tremendously. There are plenty of people that are in terrible positions. People that have no access to legs. People that can't do anything. Like people that are bed bound. And yet, they still make it work. People still do what they got to do in order to get through life. And they're looking at it from the glass half perspective full perspective like people that have like that, that have every right to hate their lives are still out here grinding and doing what they got to do every single day because ultimately thinking about it in a sense of like if i could if i didn't have if i had legs what would this life be it's not going to help them because they know that that's not that's a fairy tale it is what it is 
Just because you're not a petite girl doesn't mean you can't be more attractive. Just because you're not a petite girl doesn't mean you can't be healthier. Just because you're not a petite girl, it's not doesn't mean that you shouldn't be trying to better yourself or look down like look down upon yourself because this unachievable rank of petite, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. And there are really good days where I feel really positive about everything and I feel really really happy about everything and okay. I love myself no matter what, but I can't help but compare myself to others and I know that 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 is the thief of joy comparing myself to others but it is so hard I've looked at other people who are on these therapy maybe therapy go to somebody that can actually help you dude because like if you're this age and you haven't got out like it's all right like hear me out it's okay to compare yourself to people. You're going to do it regardless. You're judging other people. You're comparing. You're discerning things, how you're better than them, how they're better than you, what you can do to be like them more. It's okay. To a certain degree, everybody's doing it. But if it's, consume, if it's consuming your everyday life and you're like having more bad days than good days in the sense of like looking at other people and thinking – my life could be so much better than that. That's not good. That's terrible. That's a terrible, terrible thing. If you're like 90% depressed all the time because of that – Go to therapy. I don't know. Seek help somewhere. This is not a good thing. These whole GLP one journeys. Not a place. Not a place where they're on the internet. Not a place on the internet. I'm gonna give it a buck. Doing. They're maintaining. They're other goal weight. Hold on. I've looked at other people who are on these whole GLP one journeys too, and they're maintaining. So. They're other goal weight. So. In less time than it's taken me. So. And I just think, why, why wasn't that my journey what? you are fine don't don't shit on yourself because it took you longer to lose weight don't shit on yourself because it's harder for you to build muscle don't shit on yourself because ultimately it's not how things work some people are going to be naturally gifted towards things that you're just not naturally gifted towards like there are plenty of times that i would want to lift more weights there are plenty of times that i would want to run farther there are plenty of times that i would want these things to be me but ultimately it's just not me. And that's all right. You don't need to lose 100 pounds in three months. You don't need to be that person. As long as you're losing weight and you're doing it in a productive way and you're bettering yourself every day, you're getting better and better and healthier and this and this and this. That's the ultimate goal. Stop looking at other people and going, this person did it way faster and they look more better than me and they have all these things going for them. Who cares? It's not about them. It's about you. Work on yourself. Stop comparing yourself to other people. It's not benefiting you. You should only be comparing yourself to yourself yesterday. That's it. Are you better than you were yesterday? Awesome. Great. Fantastic. You're doing a good thing for yourself. Why couldn't I be at my maintaining weight or at my maintenance weight now? Like, it's been over a year. So? And again, I just have to think this is my journey. Yep. This is my body. I only get this one, so I gotta make the best out of it. Yes. I don't know. So, if you're in that struggle with me, like, this is as vulnerable as it gets. Not good, um, by the way. I don't know what I get from telling you this. Nothing. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be like, how are you even crying on the internet? Like, what's yep. the point? Yep. I don't know. What and this is, is like the equivalent of is like being a gazelle or like a koala in the African rainforest or whatever. And then going up to a lion and going like just going like this, just showing off your stomach like, hey, dude, check out my stomach munch munch it up munch up my stomach that's what you're doing it's the internet i don't think here's me hear me out you should 100 percent tell people around you how you feel and if you have a therapist that person should be the person and your friends and family the internet not the place i 100 percent think it's a good thing to have emotions sort through your emotions the internet's not it not it sis not it if i help one other person just one not feel as alone in this situation, then I sure. guess I'll count that as a win. Like, we're real people. Yep. This is, this is as real as it gets. Um, you might see a lot of the awesome things that people share, but 
I think the world would feel a little less lonely if we all shared the hard times too. We do. We just share them with the appropriate people and not the entire internet. Okay, well, that's just sad. I mean, there's nothing else I can say about that. This woman has a lot of emotions, and that's fine to have emotions. I just don't, I don't know why you're saying them on the internet. It's not going to benefit you. But on the bright side, it's 55 degrees out today. You, I feel amazing. Do you feel amazing? I know you feel amazing. I'm so happy you were here with me today. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things help me grow in the algorithm. I want to thank everybody that's a member of my channel. Thank you so much for becoming a member. You guys are awesome, amazing people. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. I appreciate it. If you don't want to, that's fine too. If you are also a subscriber, I want to thank you. You are also super amazing. Everybody here is amazing. You're just all beautiful people, every single one of you. And if you're not a people and you're like an alien or like a koala or something, that's weird, but I appreciate you too. Thank you for being here. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in emotions because we all ultimately have emotions. I know um, I like to consider myself not a very emotional person, but ultimately I think I am. A lot of people have contributed that to the fact that I'm a cancer and a lot of people go, you're a cancer. Therefore, you're an emotional bitch. I'm not emotional that much. I'm not that emotional and I have the ability to sort through my emotions. At least I try to as much as I possibly can. I'm just not going to do it here and I'm going to talk to you about the foreskin that was removed from my genitalia before I even had the decision making skills I do now. How dare you take away my foreskin? But ultimately it made my penis look prettier. So plus, but anyway, I want to talk to you today about this problem that I've been having though. I've been having this real big issue. It's actually been bothering me a lot. Actually, it's been bothering me quite a bit. The other day, I was outside. I couldn't believe this. Oh, man, it's it's actually hurting me a little bit to even talk about this. The other day, I was out and I was walking. I looked up. I was like looking at the floor because I was so depressed. And then I looked up. I looked up and I looked over and I saw you and I was like, oh my God. Whew. Oh, <laughs> I got to like, hold on. Wow. Oh my God. What a gorgeous, beautiful, amazing, spectacular, divine person. Well, I got to calm down. I got to calm down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit too, oh, my head's starting to lose a little bit of blood. If you know what I'm talking about. You look gorgeous. You look so good today. You look really good. Um, I'm not like fangirling or anything like that, but uh, you look really good today. Anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and second channel where I upload secondary clips like from my live streams that I do every once in a while. That's right. I do live stream. So if you ever check me out on my channel, sometimes I'll be doing live stream later on in the day. So if you want to ever, want to join in, we're chilling. We're having parties. We're talking. We're doing stuff. And that's a place where you can talk directly to me, which is awesome. You can also communicate with me on Discord. These things are all there. I'm happy you guys are here right now. I love every single one of you, including you. I care about you. I care about you. And anyway, guys, um, we're getting the video here. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.